So can you see my screen? Yes. Okay. So this is where we ended yesterday. So we were looking at um, building a CI/CD pipeline, and we went ahead and uh, built one uh, build release. So it is going ahead and building my project, and we saw what are the different steps it was involving in, and there was one warning, and we thought of resolving this warning today. So let us go ahead and resolve this guy. Um, just give me a minute. I'll just be back. Yeah, so um, we'll just look at this. So let me just go to repos and go to the project. So that's the project we have. And let me just open my uh, Visual Studio. Let me just see if I think this is the right project. Let me just see if um, that is the right project. We show the works as well. Let's right. Just open the solution.
So I can go ahead and uh, check once whether this is pointing to the right project. Let me just uh, make a check in. Original main auth. Start the original main auth. So that is the branch. Let me just point to this branch. Permission. Let me just go to master and let me also point to master from here. I'm just changing the branch so that we are at master. So I'm in master now. The master has a view. Not sync. Let me just sync because um, I have a CS file here and there is a VB file here. You can see that dot VB, the Visual Basic. So I did not sync it. Let me just sync this so that I get the CS file which I have in the cloud. In the cloud, I have CS files. So let me just sync this and get those uh, files in my local repository. <coughs> It looks as expected. Let me just uh, make a change and be sure that what I'm seeing is the right branch because we are building against a branch. Again, we will be choosed. So this is and continuous. Let me just go to changes. Pointing to the right branch. So now let me just go ahead and uh, create a unit test case. So, what's the unit test case? You see that create unit test cases. So, I can go ahead and create a unit test case from here. New project, yes, framework. NS test V2, that should be fine, and everything as a failure or the asset failure, not as a failure. Yeah, it will be as a failure. And say okay. It is creating a unit test case project for me. Give it a minute. 
have created my uh, test case. Index test, um, everything looks good. Let me just go to test export. So, um, let me execute it, then start speaking about it. That's my test explorer. And it went ahead and gathered the information about what are the test cases in my project. And it found one test case, which is a home controller tests and the index test. It found it right. Now, if I just say run all, it will go ahead and run my test case. And it should give me a success and you should get all uh, green tick marks there So you see all the green tick marks there. Everything is green. So it says, yeah, it passed because I just uh, forced it to pass. I just made it uh, a true so that uh, it definitely passes and it passed. So now coming back to uh, what is a test case and uh, why do we write uh, unit test cases? So whenever you have uh, code in your uh, project. So we have a simple uh, code here, which is a home controller. So pretty straightforward uh, code, wherein it has uh, um, index about and uh, contact actions in the home controller. Um, I don't know whether you are familiar with ASP.NET or not. Um, are you familiar with ASP.NET uh, coding? Uh, how is it? You are familiar with this? Uh, Lakshmi Narayana and Prashant. Prashant is not familiar with it. What about Lakshmi Narayana? Oh, Lakshmi Narayana is not familiar with it. Or both are not familiar with it. Okay, both are not familiar with it. Okay. Um, then, how can I explain uh, these things? So, what is the programming language that you know? Uh, any programming language you know? Java, uh, what is the programming language you know? Both of you. So that I can explain it in that terms. Okay, you have an idea. Lakshmi Arana has an idea. What about uh, Prashant? You know any programming language or uh, Okay, you know about Java. Okay, little bit of uh, So, essentially, um, then we need to just speak about a little bit about this project structure because this is a very famous uh, architecture which is MVC. And uh, DevOps developers need to know programming language. Um, it is an expectation from the DevOps developers that they need to know um, programming languages because um, uh, we deal with code. We cannot be just on this code. That's not uh, what is the expectation from a DevOps engineer. This portal is important and configuring things and stuff like that is important. Apart from that, we also need to know how to work with code um, to some extent. So. Um, it is a very common expectation, and when you are a, when you are working with Azure uh, DevOps, 
you essentially need to understand .NET um, um, culture because you are dealing with uh, .NET Microsoft uh, proprietary cloud platform. This is Microsoft proprietary cloud platform. And whenever you're dealing with Microsoft uh, platform, you should know .NET to some extent because all the code what you see in the repos, most of the code would be .NET code. So it, would, it is uh, uh, essential for you to know what uh, um, what is uh, .NET and uh, what is this architecture, which is MVC architecture. What is this uh, architecture? Let me just uh, quickly run you through that instead of uh, too much of stress. Let me just run you through that because you need to know it, and we have uh, very few sessions left before we close this call, this uh, training. So let me just go there. Is program MVC five? So what is this? Whenever you are dealing with uh, in this, there are three players uh, who are important in this: MVC, model, view, controller. When you build uh, your application using the MVC architecture, then when a request is coming in from a user, a user is sending a request. When a request is coming in from a user. Then it essentially goes to the controller. Controller is the guy who will take the request. That is why his name is controller. Controller takes the input requests which are coming from the user. And once the controller takes the request, he will speak to model. What is model? Model is the thing which you pull from the database. So you will be interacting in your application to the database. And model is the one which will be representing my database's data. So controller will go ahead and speak to the model that is the database and get the model. It will speak to the database and get the model. Once it gets the model, it takes the model and pumps it into the view. Once it takes the model and pumps it into the view, that's where you will see the output. So let me demo this for you. If I say five, it will debug. Um, just give it a minute. It will launch my browser and it will show me the home screen. Let it show the home screen, then we'll uh, debug and uh, let's show you the flow. Just run the website. You can just see that it has landed in my controller. What is my controller? Home controller. It landed in my controller and it is executing a method in the controller. So you can see that it is executing my first method, which is in the controller. That is what I said in the diagram. 
the request comes to the controller. Who got it? The controller got it. Once the controller gets it, he will try building the model. There is no model here. I did not build any model here. So because there is no model, this is gone. I will not uh, speak about this. So then what will you do? He will try to render the view onto the UI. So what will happen? The view. It will go ahead and render the view. If I say F5, that is where I'll get the view in the UI. Your user interface. You see the view there. So I, who got the request? The controller. Controller went ahead and uh, spoke to the view and rendered the view. Usually there would be also another layer, which is the model. I need to have a model which will go ahead and uh, fetch the data from the database. So as a DevOps engineer, see, um, you need to understand one thing. There is a shift in thinking in the current uh, culture. You used to have um, teams Previously, you used to have teams like uh, <clears throat> developer team, and uh, there was a QA team, there was a build and deploy team. And there is a support team. I'll not speak about support team. These are the three teams which we have. Once DevOps come into picture, what is DevOps doing? It is changing the direction of uh, thinking within a team. Now the developer can also write test cases. What did I just write? So, where is the solution expert? Okay. Let me just close that. So, if you look at this, let me close this guy as well. <coughs> if you look at this, in the DevOps, I have to work in uh, as a developer, working code. And uh, what did I just do? I went ahead and wrote uh, test cases. This is a unit test case which I wrote. Well, how can I say that this is a test case? By looking at the decoration. It says test class, test method. So I am having a unit test case which I have uh, which I have uh, declared. So the test class and test method. Who wrote this? I as a developer, DevOps developer wrote this. I did not write it yet. I just created it. I just right clicked and uh, created this. I did not write it yet. But if you just look at this, I have a test case written and I have written it. As and when the time goes by, the QA would not no longer be required or minimal QA would be required. It would not like uh, not be like the entire team would be gone. You would need, uh, if at all you have uh, six QA engineers, now, when, once DevOps comes into picture, you would just reduce that six count to two. You will definitely need QA, but not to that extent. You would reduce the count to two. Build and deploy. When will these people work? They will only work during release. Whenever there is a release, these people will come in, take the package of my code, Take the code package, deploy it in the server, see if everything is running fine or not. Once everything is running fine, they are good. For at least for the next two months, unless and until I have a release uh, for the next two months, that is if they have released, uh, if we have released as a team, if we have released um, uh, code 
now today on 16 we have released it to production say as a team for the next two months i would not have a release we will not have a release for the next two months what will happen development qa and these two teams will work the development team and the qa team they will work and go ahead and uh, uh, build something solid and after two months we will have a release that is may june july in july 15 or 16 we will have a release until two months what is this team doing build and deploy nothing they have no work so what is the thing that devops does they will kill this team and it is not there anymore in my current team there is no build and deploy i as a devops engineer will will de will define the i just don't know where to put this i as a devops engineer will go ahead and build the pipeline which is my build and release pipeline i will build this and i will run this that is what i did just now i ran this right it went ahead and ran and it gave me success or failure so i went ahead and ran and who built the build and deploy i as a devops engineer once we come into picture then these teams are no longer there we will be the only one who will be surviving in teams devops takes your entire concentration from um, uh, different teams and it will place the responsibility of different teams to development team. So it would be the development team would be the core in a DevOps team. So it is essential for you to have uh, .NET programming knowledge or Java programming knowledge. It is fine. Azure DevOps works with Java as well as .NET. But essentially have some fundamental programming knowledge about these uh, technologies because as DevOps engineers, it is required for you and me to understand uh, uh, C sharp code or Java code. So just do a little bit of learning around uh, C sharp or uh, Java code. That would be essential for you because uh, um, if a DevOps engineer he is essentially well versed and he is replacing these tools which you see here. So when you are replacing teams inside a big project then the responsibility is more on you as a devops engineer so just remember that part and um, that is where my mvc framework is coming from it has its own advantages and um, why i will use mvc but essentially understand the input will come to the controller and that's where the controller will go ahead and process the request and uh, show the output to me that's about your uh, MVC. So I built an MVC project initially. Whenever we were uh, speaking about uh, DevOps, we started building a project and we built a MVC project. Just have Visual Studio installed on your machine and follow the steps what, what I am doing here. Cloning, um, building the project or uh, rendering the output. What is the shortcut of rendering the output? I am doing control F5. What is the shortcut of uh, uh, debugging? You should you need to use uh, um, F5. Very basic fundamentals of working with Visual Studio. Have that minimal knowledge. Without that, um, uh, it would be very difficult for you. Even if you crack the interview and go inside, it would be difficult for you for to survive on the floor. There are two steps. One is uh, we need to crack interview and get inside. The second step is surviving in the floor. So even if you crack interview because of whatever you have learned, you know now the uh, different things, what, what goes in Agile, what goes in uh, Scrum, what goes in the repos, how, how it works, and now you are seeing build, uh, uh, build uh, stage. Next you will see release stage. So all of these are uh, different stages which uh, you will see. And you will get a feel of uh, how you can go ahead and work with these different stages. So in your interview, you can impress uh, people uh, into thinking that uh, you know programming and you know DevOps because of the answers you give. Once you go on the floor, that's where is the next challenge. That is the second challenge which you have. First challenge is cracking the interview and getting the operator. Second challenge is uh, surviving on the floor. To survive on the floor, you need programming knowledge. You need to have uh, uh, programming knowledge on C-sharp or Java. 
because DevOps works with both. So uh, essentially, I would recommend that you need to have uh, uh, programming knowledge of Java, of uh, C sharp, not of Java. Why? Because 90% uh, of the projects which work on Azure DevOps are uh, Microsoft.NET uh, projects. And the most famous framework which is used inside uh, Microsoft to build any new project is your uh, is your MVC, what we are using here. You need to have all these things uh, in place. So just go ahead and uh, that is your next step. Once you're done with DevOps uh, learning, the next step is uh, get your programming basics right and uh, learn about your uh, learn a little bit about the latest frameworks in uh, ASP.NET. One is MVC. ASP.NET MVC is one of the latest frameworks. So just have a good understanding of this because uh, it's very important. What is the next thing what we uh, are doing? We are going ahead and writing test cases. What is this uh, test case doing? If I go to home computer, there is an index method. Each method in my code, each method in my code is a unit. How many methods I have in my code here? I have three methods. One, two, and three. I have three methods in my code. So how many units are there in my code? There are three units. And when there are when there are units, you need to test units. It is like uh, uh, when you are building a when, uh, when you are when you are working in a uh, manufacturing company like uh, mobile phone manufacturing company, say for an example. When you are actually going ahead and uh, seeing that the mobile which is manufactured is good, what do you do as a tester? You would switch on the mobile, you would play with the basic functionalities of the mobile and check uh, uh, how it is behaving and how is it responding. You have multiple ways of uh, testing things. So you will test it and then you will say test and OK. You will be having a stick effect, test and OK, saying that yeah, everything is looking good inside this mobile phone. So that's what you'll be having a scene on your uh, mobile phone box that uh, it, is, it is looking good. So that is what is the thing, what you and me are doing when we are writing uh, unit test cases. What are unit test cases doing? They are going ahead and uh, helping me test my units. I'm testing my units before going to production. Without unit test cases, if at all I go to production, there is a risk that uh, I can have bugs. To avoid bugs, I, I need to understand, uh, I need to test my units. That is where I'm going ahead and testing my units. This is what is called as unit testing. So what is my unit method? Testing a method is called as unit testing. That is what is the reason why I write unit testing. Once I have written the unit testing, I can run my unit test cases. Where do I run my unit test cases? Here. There is something called as a test explorer. What you see here on the left hand side, that is the test explorer. So what is test explorer doing? It will go ahead and uh, find all the test cases which are present in my new project. All the test cases which are present in my project are found there. In, no matter where they are, they are in a separate project or in the same project. It doesn't care. It will go ahead and find all the unit test cases which are present in the project. Once it finds it, it will list down my uh, number of test cases. What will I do as a software engineer? I'll just say run. So once I say run, what it will do? It will go ahead and build the entire project and it will start running the unit test cases. Here I had a very simple unit test case which I have written. I'm saying uh, uh, I'm returning Q so that it is all green. Everything is looking green. So to make it green, I just make uh, return true. So that is what is what I'm seeing whenever I'm uh, writing the unit test case. I will test a unit. Once the unit has passed my test. I will say true. If the unit has failed, I will say false. Let me go ahead and say false.
asset.fail. So now if I just uh, run the unit test cases, run all, it will build. My battery is dying. Just give me a minute while it builds. It will build and it will fail these uh, test cases. Let us just see that. It has failed my test case. Why? Because I told it to fail. I said don't fail. I said uh, to fail. Look at that. Uh, how it shows. It even shows uh, what 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 code line it failed, and uh, what happened with the error. What happened with the error? You can see that the stack trace. You can just click on the stack trace and go to that particular line. Where did it fail? It is highlighting me the line number 70. That's where it failed. So you can just see that it is a very clear uh, uh, UI. I can clearly see how many test cases passed. And if at all there is a test case which is failing, what is that test case? I can see all that and I can uh, run these things again and again. This is what is uh, unit test cases, unit test, uh, unit testing. So what will you do in unit testing? You will go ahead and unit uh, test your units. What are your units? The methods are your units. That is what you will do inside the uh, unit test case. So let me just uh, pull my charges. Just a minute. Yeah. So that your unit test cases okay for all um, there is something here let me just see for all i need to highlight something so Whenever you're testing uh, your uh, project, there are multiple frameworks which are available out there to test your uh, code. One of the frameworks is uh, MS Unit Test, which is uh, Microsoft Unit Test Cases. That is what is MS Unit Test Cases. The other framework which you have is M Unit Testing. So these things are required in your interview questions. In your interviews, they will ask you what are the test case frameworks which you have used. Uh, can you just tell me what are the test case frameworks which you have used? You should say MS unit test and uh, eight unit test cases. What we are seeing now are MS unit test cases. This test case is a Microsoft unit test case. So what is good, what is bad? There is nothing like that. So all of uh, the frameworks which are out there can help you work with uh, uh, any of the testing environment. What is good, what is bad? Let me answer it in a different way. What is uh, good? Uh, using C sharp and building application is good, or using Java and building application is good, which is good according to you. Nothing of that sort, right? I can build an application. You can you come up with a requirement. I can build that requirement in Java, I can build that requirement in C sharp, which is good. There is nothing like good and bad. It is your choice of technology. You went with this particular uh, technology. That is what you will be using when building your uh, application. So there is nothing like .NET is good or Java is good. Both are the solutions to solve the same problem. In the same way, there is nothing like uh, uh, MS unit test cases is good or any unit test cases is good. There are a few differences between these two. But essentially, it is nothing like uh, breaking differences. So most of the time, in your projects, you will be writing in a similar test cases. Why? Because uh, they are proprietary Microsoft. MS is Microsoft. So they are proprietary Microsoft. And that is what uh, uh, is the advantage of uh, writing. Uh, because you are using Azure, and Azure is Microsoft's proprietary thing. And you are using Visual Studio, which is again Microsoft. 
So it is better for you to use Microsoft framework to go ahead and uh, build your uh, unit test cases. So that's your uh, MS unit and N unit. Just remember those uh, names. N unit test cases, it has uh, um, support for all the languages. So if at all you are creating a unit test case, this is extensively on unit testing. Let me just see if at all I want to highlight something. Mocking. Whenever you are having, uh, you are you are writing a unit test case. You want to just uh, test a unit test case and uh, not go beyond your unit test case. What do I mean by that? Well, you have uh, a unit test case like. There is a test case uh, method, method one, or you say payment method, saying uh, process payment. That's my method. In the first line, I'm going ahead and doing something. In the second line, what am I doing? I am going ahead and um, hitting a payment gateway. Say Paytm or say ICICI Bank. That's the payment gateway which I am hitting in the second line of code. In the third line of code, I'm, I'm just doing nothing. Just think there are only two lines of code. One is doing doing something, one line of code. Second line of code is hitting a third party gateway. What is, uh, what is external? What is an external call? This doing something is doing something internally. Is this an external call? This is going outside the method, right? Where is payment gateway? It would be outside the method. You would be hitting a third party payment gateway to go ahead and process the payment. Is it within the code or in, would that be some other component which is outside the code? It would be some other component which would be outside the code. You would be integrating with some uh, third party vendors and you would be processing your uh, payment. That is what has to be mocked in a unit test case. When I will write a unit test case for this, What will I do? I'll go ahead and mock anything which is uh, external. Anything which is external has to be mocked. That is what I'll do inside this. I will mock that external call. Mock this call. <clears throat> Once I mock this call, then what will happen? I will only test this method. Anything which is hitting out has to be mocked. When you speak about mocking, there are multiple mocking frameworks which are present inside uh, Microsoft. If I just go to manage NuGet packages, you see you say mock. That's MOQ mock. How many downloads? 55 million downloads. It's a very famous mocking framework. You can mock your external calls. That is, in our example, we said, what is the external call? The payment. Payment is the external call. You can mock your external calls by using a framework. That is your mocking framework, which is MOQ. Your MOQ is a mocking framework. Is this the only framework which is available? No, there is another framework which is Dynamoc.
there is another framework which is called as Rhinomoc, which is not shown here directly. So you see that Rhinomoc. So it is another famous framework which I will be using to mock my uh, external calls. I have multiple frameworks to mock my external calls. Two of the famous frameworks are your MOQ. You either call it MOQ or you say mock. MOQ mock. You can use a MOQ to mock your uh, external calls or you can use your uh, Rhino mocks. Essentially, unit test cases are a combination of mocking and unit test case framework. To just uh, summarize whatever we have spoken until now. Whenever you are using uh, unit test cases, you have multiple frameworks. What are the frameworks which are available? MS unit test case framework or N unit framework. There is another framework which is called as X unit. That is what is the latest framework. Just do a simple read around uh, what are these different frameworks. You see that there? So Do a little bit of read around why X unit, N unit, or MS test. There is there is a multiple uh, set of comparisons which you will find online. People fighting about which is good, which is bad. There is nothing like uh, good or bad according to me. MS unit test case can work good, and N unit also can work good. X unit also can work good. It all depends upon my um, essential. Uh, understanding and my essential uh, working with uh, different frameworks so essentially there are multiple frameworks available out there just read a little bit about it in a framework in a unit test case framework i will be using the mocking so that is what is the mock framework MOQ or the rhino mocks why will i mock any external call which is being done to uh, outside your method has to be mocked so that is what that is why I will go ahead and do mocking in my uh, application. That's your uh, mocking. Is there anything else which I want to highlight? There is something called as uh, AAA syntax. What is AAA syntax? What will it help me do? It will help me go ahead and uh, build a unit test case using a certain pattern. It is called as AAA pattern. What is AAA? Arrange, act, and assert. A A U. Arrange, act, and assert. What does arrange, act, and assert say? Arrange will go ahead and arrange the unit test cases in a certain way. Act will go ahead and execute the unit test case assert is what you see there on the screen it will go ahead and assert whether the output is true or false if it is fail if it is false it will fail if it is true it will pass so essentially you have a very famous pattern which is called as uh, arrange act and assert pattern this pattern will help you structure your code in a better fashion so we have multiple ways of structuring our code and we use patterns in our day-to-day uh, -day lives as programmers. One of the famous patterns is your triple A pattern. So just have a good uh, read around triple A. In your uh, interviews, they will ask you this. What is the pattern you use to build your unit test cases? Say triple A pattern. Even if you are unable to explain it, at least give one line answer. Because uh, uh, it's a very famous pattern, and if you at least uh, give one line answer, then the interviewer would be happy, thinking that you at least know the very fundamentals, even if you are not able to explain it. Just go ahead and read a little bit about it, but just uh, at least have a one word answer whenever someone asks you about what is the pattern you used to build your uh, unit test cases. That is what is a triple A pattern. Then what do we have?
what are the other test test tests uh, which you have inside uh, a project this is not uh, for devops i am saying what are the other types of uh, tests which you have inside a project what is unit test cases what is other kind of test it is a integration test case what is the integration test case so essentially you will be having multiple components which you will define in your uh, project you will be having a product component you will be having a order component a payment component so you will be having multiple components when you are actually going ahead and building a, a real time application when you are done uh, building it then you need to test whether everyone is speaking to one another in a proper way or not like there is a handshake or not that is what you want to do uh, go ahead and uh, go ahead and uh, uh, test that is where you would go ahead and do the integration test whether all of my components are integrated well or not that is where you do integration test cases that's your another way of uh, test integration test cases what is another way which uh, you have end to end test cases end to end is right from ui till the database everything has to be tested so what you will do you will write end to end test cases each project has their own uh, set of standards to write uh, whatever is other number of test cases we can write so people usually go for unit test cases some projects also go with uh, integration test cases and uh, functional test cases all of these are very famous uh, different set of test cases which you can have what are the other uh, test cases which you have it is uh, automated uh, ui test cases like selenium so selenium comes under automated ui test cases it will go ahead and test your entire code by running uh, uh, selenium test cases so that's another uh, uh, reason why you need to have uh, test cases so that you will have a healthy project so selenium test cases usually tests your uh, entire ui which uh, what are the common test cases which are thinking of all of that can be go uh, can be integrated with the integration with the uh, integration test case or uh, with an automated uh, ui test case we are speaking about selenium right so automated ui test case what is another kind of uh, testing there is content based testing and there is functional testing so you have uh, different kinds of testing which you can do in an application what are you see on screen those are the different kinds of test cases which i can build on my uh, project so that's pretty much about your uh, uh, test cases and what are the different kinds of test cases and what we need to do with uh, test cases so just uh, do some round of uh, learning around uh, what a test case is and how to execute a test case is to i'll go ahead and pause this and let me just run it once more so that i'm sure that everything is fine went fine so the project looks healthy and i have uh, test cases are they checked into the cloud they are not checked into the cloud do you find a test cases project here you are you don't get find it because i did not check in that to the cloud so let us check in that to the cloud i'll go to team explorer go to home changes I'll say comment all and uh, sync. <coughs> it 
it's done. Now, if I go ahead and look at the cloud, I should have another project here in the master branch. You see another project which is present here. Now, MVC auth tests, that's another project. If I just go to controllers, look at home controller uh, test index, you see index test and it is saying they are true. Now if I go to build pipeline, and go to the specific build, Thank you. What am I doing here? I have multiple tasks. One of the tasks is test assembly. What happened previously? It was trying to find a test assembly and it failed. Once it did not find a test assembly, it went it threw me a warning. What is the warning it said? You do not have any test cases present here. Please go ahead and uh, install or write test cases and then execute those test cases here. That is what is the warning. This is what we want to repeat. Uh, we want to remove. So if I just go to builds the project and say queue. That is essentially Go ahead and queue my build. It will look for an agent. And it will go ahead and start building. It is trying to find an agent. Just give it a minute. It will go ahead and start building. Yeah. So it started building. <coughs> Let it execute the tasks. I do not have the, yeah, I have muted it. Just now I am muted. I do not have the permission to make you the presenter. I think, uh, Meghna has it. Uh, is she there? Uh, if at all Meghna is there, then she can make you the presenter. I can make you the presenter, let me just check. Okay, I can make you the presenter. Um, who wants it? It's the Shant, is it? Oh, is it? It's a wrong click, is it? Okay. Then I'll just ignore it. So, what is the difference between the other uh, pipeline and this pipeline? What did you see here? Test assemblies. Did it succeed? Yeah, it succeeded. What is it saying? Everything is green now. The test assemblies warning is no longer there. What happened? I have checked in my test assemblies. Once I've checked in my test assemblies, my pipeline, the build pipeline, was able to find the test assembly. 
and it went ahead and built the test assembly and is showing me the output. That is as simple as uh, how you can fix that uh, warning. So in the previous thing, the warning was there. The warning was there. Now the warning is no longer there. That is what is um, integrating unit test cases into your project is all about. So, um, any questions you have before we move forward, you can just ask or uh, type it up to you. Um, if you have no questions, that's fine. So, if you have any questions, get back to me. So that's your uh, build pipeline. What are the other ways in which I can uh, write a build pipeline? If I just say new build pipeline, you see the YAML there. I'll say YAML. We have built it using uh, classic editor. Let us build it using YAML. I'll say YAML. It is asking me what is the project you want me to build. I will say the current project. This is what I want to build. What is this project type of? I will say ASP document. It is building me the YAML. Once the YAML is built, I will say save and run. Now it will go ahead and start. Um, building my code and we will see the difference between that and this. Let it build the code. I'll just mute until then. It will take a minute. So everything went fine and it has built me my uh, code. If you just look at uh, what just, what is it that I did? I'll go to builds. This is what is my build. If I edit it. What is it? It's a YAML file. You call it YML. Instead of saying YML, you say YAML, YAML. That's a standard of how you call that file. It's a YAML file. What is the other build? What is this guy? It is a classic editor version. Both are working fine. Yeah, both gave me the output, right? In the history, I'm seeing this, right? So I can see that uh, both are working fine. This is what is the latest way of uh, doing the thing, which is YAML. That's your YAML file. So Azure Pipelines, YAML. What are you doing here? Instead of graphically defining it, let me open this in a new tab. So that it is easier for us to understand. 
uh, I am coming to that question. Instead of writing tasks like this, I write tasks like this. I will write it like uh, a code. I am writing code here. So it is more towards writing code than uh, using your uh, graphic editor. For me, it is more easier. But uh, this is what is the latest convention, and they will retire this very soon. So they are thinking of moving everyone onto the YAML. It has its own advantages when I move to YAML. So there is a question. Um, no need to write YAML script. Yeah, we need to write YAML script. <coughs> With whatever changes you want, you, you can uh, write that uh, inside your YAML script. You can say, if at all you want to add something, it will anyway not work. So if at all I want to add uh, antler, I will go ahead and say add. It goes ahead and adds antler uh, code in my YAML. I can just uh, remove all that. That is what is another rule. So essentially, uh, I need to write YAML script. I will not write YAML script. What will I do? I'll go ahead and create the tasks like this. I'll add the tasks. Like there is a .NET Core task. I'll say add. You see that here? .NET Core task. I need to add. I'll say add. That's how straightforward it is for me to add a task. Instead of adding task here, what am I, how will I add a task here? I'll say add, save, dot core, add, and move it up. So if you just look at this, this is more uh, intuitive for me. This is the classic version. This is not latest. Latest is YAML. We have to write it in YAML. That is what is Microsoft uh, suggesting all of the software engineers that they need to write uh, your code in terms of YAML. But a more famous uh, way is uh, your uh, classic editor. By using uh, drag and drop options, you can go ahead and work with uh, um, your build file very easily. So these are the two options, very famous you have. What are the other options which are? If I say new. Build pipeline. It is asking me to write it in YAML by default. If I just say classic editor to create the pipeline without YAML, then I'll go to what you see here. Then you'll see what you see here. So essentially, both are fine. YAML is also fine, and uh, classic editor view is also fine. For me, classic editor view is more easy than using YAML. YAML is more uh, code kind of a way to get the things done. I'm not that uh, that uh, uh, interested in it. I want to use the user interface to go ahead and insert uh, code for me. So that is where I use uh, the regular code. There is a regular class editor instead of using your uh, YAML file. That is one more thing which I wanted to discuss on the pipelines. I can see that um, um, everything has been fine. There is another thing which I want to show. Look at the overview of the build succeeded or I 
I'm just uh, looking at one of the analytics view. Let me just see what all I can find it. It will show you how many test cases ran and um, what is it that you can um, um, expect out of that uh, report, that essentially coverage report and stuff like that. All of that would be given. I'm just looking at that. Poster isn't summary. Yeah. What are the number of test cases which have uh, passed? You see that there. This is what is what I wanted. Only one test case we had, right? In a real time scenario, you would be having uh, at least 200 to 300 uh, test cases which are written. And uh, all of that would be graphically represented to you. Like that, uh, as a circle. It will clearly tell you how many test cases are there. How many passed? How many failed? What is your coverage report? What is the time I took to complete uh, all these uh, test cases to be done? And what is the pass percentage and stuff like that? So it is uh, giving you all the different stats when you are speaking about uh, test case coverage. So this is one place where I will get a UI way of uh, understanding what is happening with my uh, test cases. I'll get a graphical understanding of what is happening with my test cases. So everywhere, even all you test, even all you check it, all of these are the steps which we executed in our uh, build template. So inside my build template, I went ahead and executed all this. Once I will go ahead with build, there are multiple build steps. So I'll just uh, The pipeline is yours. If you just look at uh, what is the rate and what are the dates at which uh, test cases were uh, fired, you can clearly see it will point to the current date 16.5 and how many test cases were uh, passed, how many test cases were failed. You will, you will, in a real time scenario, you will see a graph uh, with, with multiple dots. So that is what is the place where you can see what happened with your test cases, how many passed, how many failed, you failed, what are the reasons for which it failed. I can get all that clarity when I'm looking at uh, this chart. I can filter it by uh, four days or 30 days or uh, today. It all depends upon my uh, requirement. But if you want more than that, you need to set a filter. You need to set a filter and you need to go ahead and do uh, more modifications if it is more than that. But by default, it will give you 30 days and uh, 5 days and uh, 7 days and 14 days. So it will by default give you all this. If I go to my uh, history, these are the two things. All of these things are watching on the master. All of these uh, pipelines are watching on my uh, master branch. Where are they watching? On my master branch. Any change, if it happens with my master branch, then it should trigger this uh, build. Let us do that. As I this should trigger the CICD build. I'll go ahead and say changes. Run it all on the sink.
is done click on the build what is this it started a build did i do that so just now it started at uh, 8:24 18 seconds just now so did i trigger that i did not trigger that that is the power of uh, cic your uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment it, there will be constant watchers on your uh, branches and whenever a change happens to a branch it will trigger and it will deploy that is why it is a very powerful way of building your uh, applications because every time whenever uh, a change happens you can expect that the change would be available in your queue and manner within no time because of this process i did not trigger the build manually it was watching and it went ahead and triggered the build and it is building the code that's the beauty of uh, cicd pipelines they are very efficient and uh, they know what needs to be done when there when there is a check in so let it just build You can see everything succeeded. So all of the things are succeeded, and uh, they look good. Did I uh, execute it? No, I did not execute it. I just checked in the code from my Visual Studio. It automatically triggered it. This is what happens in your uh, real-time application. You will not trigger any of your builds. whenever you are uh, having a check in whenever you are having a check in to your master branch it will go ahead and trigger the ci cd pipeline and it will go ahead and deploy the code depending upon your configuration to either uh, tab environment or staging environment or queue environment or queue environment it all depends upon how you have uh, configured it but all of this is automatic once i have checked in the code then um, um, the code would be available in the next environment within a couple of minutes or 10 minutes within 10 minutes the code should be available in my uh, environment that is what is the advantage of the advantage of using the ci that is a continuous integration and integrating it with the test cases and what are test cases and uh, when will this be triggered all of that uh, we have spoken about so these are the different things which you need to know when you are working with a field are there anything else which i need to highlight let me just check YAML file, is it? Yeah, YAML file. How we are uh, going to do? I mean, uh, without classic, uh, if we, I want to write something, I mean, uh, separately, how it will be? Yeah, you can see that. Um, let me just uh, show you that what you will do inside the YAML file. So you just say, what is it that you want to do? And if you say, 
run this. Let me run it and then uh, come to the YAML file. Adding tasks to it is nothing. You can just uh, do it in a minute. I'll just show it to you. So let it run. Let me see if uh, everything goes fine. It will take a minute. And then uh, I'll just show it to you. Well, if I just uh, go to the builds and edit this, that's your uh, YAML file. So, what is it that you have here? You have uh, on what should I trigger on master? Let me compare this with the classic editor because uh, I keep using classic editor. I don't like the YAML one. <clears throat> on what should it uh, trigger whenever there is a change to the master it should trigger whenever there is a change to the master it should trigger what is the pool so I am saying uh, VM image whatever is the VM image this is where uh, I'm, I'm using the Azure's VM. It's not any VM uh, which I own. I'm not owning this VM. This is Azure's VM. I'm saying what should be the VM which you need to use. I'm saying Windows latest. Whatever is the latest VM, please use that. That is the command which I'm saying there. What are the variables? What is it that I want to build? I want to build my solution. My entire solution that is what I'm saying here solution what should be the build platform what should be the build configuration in my regular thing it would all go inside this inside a task I'll say what should I build the solution and what should be the package location and uh, deploy on build and stuff like that all of that will go in MS arguments and stuff in YAML, there is nothing like MS arguments. You would build it more towards uh, XML kind of a way or uh, JSON kind of a way. You are building it uh, as a YAML essentially. But when I say JSON, essentially it's a key value type. That is what I'm saying. What should be the steps? These are my steps. What's the first step? Use the NuGet and install the NuGet. Install the NuGet. Restore the new bit. That is what is this. Restoring the new bit. Then go ahead and build my solution. That is exactly what they are doing inside the YAML. They are going ahead and building the solution. Next, go ahead and test the assembly. That is what they are doing. They are going ahead and testing the assembly. What are the two steps which are not there? Are publish and uh, publish artifact. I don't have those steps inside my uh, default uh, YAML file. So the number of tasks which you want to use. After this task, I want to add uh, a task to use add to. 
to use and uh, build. I'll just put, uh, click on that. I'll say add. As simple as that. All of the and logic is auto inserted. Depending upon what I want to do, JDK version, whatever JDK version you want to give. If it is latest or uh, old version, what is the build file? What is it uh, that you want to do? Publish with the JUnit results. And uh, what are the tasks? What are the task result filters that you want to give? All of that. It will give you a draft. You can add more and more code to it. The number of tasks which you want to add, keep on dropping those tasks here. You will find 1000 tasks here. You'll get tired of uh, tasks. So, if at all, I want a gulp or grunt task, which I want to insert. I'll say that. Gulp or uh, grunt task inside my uh, YAML file. So, if you can just look at this, what are the number of tasks which I can insert? All of this. And what will I insert? It all depends upon what is your requirement. Do you want to work with service fabric? Go ahead and use this service fabric uh, task. It will give you the service traffic task. You can go ahead and insert that and work with uh, service traffic. So what is it uh, that I can do? All of that is just a click. So you will only click. You will not type anything. You will type something like publish J unit results and say false. So I'll say no, don't publish the J unit results. So something of this sort is what you will do. You will say false or true or something like that. You will not build the node. The node is just like you just go to what you require and you just uh, click on that and say add. You got all what you require and you've not uh, build it from scratch. That is the advantage I get using uh, YAML. Whenever I'm using YAML, I can directly go ahead and uh, click on the right hand side and uh, insert those uh, tasks. So, if at all, I'm working with files. Archiving files, Azure file copy. If at all, I want to copy it to the Azure. That is what is the Azure uh, file copy. So, depending upon what your scenario is, that is what is the task which you select, and you will uh, drop the task in the, in the YAML and then start working on it. So, instead of that, what I like is the classic uh, editor one. I can actually go ahead and add same. It will uh, it will add. When it adds, if I want to move it up or down, this is much easier for me. I'll just move it up or down like this. Because tasks uh, uh, have to be ordered. Here, whenever I want to move it up or down, you'll cut paste it. You'll cut it and paste it and stuff. I don't like the text kind of a way working with uh, your um, Azure. I use more uh, graphical kind of a way using uh, tasks and stuff like that. So this is what is uh, what I use. But essentially you have uh, YAML as well as uh, task way of uh, getting the things done. Um, did you get it? You got it? Uh, Prashant asked me. Right? Uh, so you got it right Prashant? Or you want me to do to add something else or uh, anything? Yeah, if you add something and uh, we run, we'll uh, run a bit. Uh, add something and run, is it? There is nothing to be run in our uh, default uh, project because I don't have any files to be copied. If at all, I want to play around with files, right? Copy files and stuff. I don't have any files to be copied. Even this antler, it will crash. I cannot work with antler uh, uh, here because I don't have any JDK kind of a integration with my project. So it's a, it is uh, uh, not a project which is working with Java. So I need not even have this. So depending upon what your requirement is, you will be dropping that task and you will be working with that task. That is what I want to say when you are working with uh, YAML. It's pretty straightforward. So you can just see that if at all I want to deploy it in uh, IS, I'll just drop this task. Dropping the task is essentially clicking on that task and add, adding that task. So essentially, uh, 
uh, it's pretty straightforward working with YAML as well as uh, your uh, classic editor. Both are fine. I like classic editor because it is uh, more uh, intuitive. I can clearly see it rather than working with the text which YAML uh, shows and use it to classic editor. So I hardly use this in production. I don't like uh, using YAMLs. Um, it's more text driven and I don't like text driven when I'm working with Azure DevOps. So you, depending upon your scenario, you just uh, drop those things and you will start using those things. I don't have any other things which I'm working on in my current project. If you want other things, then I need to again add a few things here and then uh, use a few things in my uh, Azure code. So um, it would essentially be a redundant exercise, which I believe, because we have uh, other things to be covered. Um, and we have uh, almost, um, we will be closing it on, um, uh, um, here I believe we have to be done with a number of parts. That is on uh, aging. Um, it should be done with a number of arts. Let me just check that once. So I'm just planning to close it on 18th and we have uh, quite a few things which we want to speak about. The next thing what we will speak about is releases and uh, then we will move to the test plans. And there we can uh, close and we can just uh, um, say that we have looked at uh, all of the things which have to do with uh, Azure DevOps code. So we have quite a few things which we need to speak about. So if uh, I keep on working on different examples, then I will be just rotating around build scripts only. I will not be moving forward. My plan is to move forward to the next thing. So is that fine? Uh, Prashant, is that? Um, if you are speaking, I can't hear you. Okay. Okay, great. So now we'll just uh, move on to the next thing. We will not uh, cover it entirely. We are close to close and uh, it's just in between. So I'll just start it. Then we will uh, end it and we'll come back to it uh, tomorrow as well. Releases. What is release? Essentially, whenever I'm done with my uh, build, I need to deploy it. Build is just giving me the package. I want to deploy the package in in some uh, environment, in uh, Azure or uh, anywhere, wherever uh, I can connect to and deploy. Let us say Azure. I can't deploy it in Azure because it would be costly for me. Uh, it would cost me this amount. So what I will show you, I will show you all the steps which are required for me, for you to actually create a release pipeline. pipeline. So what can we do? to create a new pipeline. I can go ahead and say new pipeline. And I'll get this. I can go ahead and work with the pipeline and I can build a pipeline. Instead of saying this, is there a better way? Yeah, there is a better way of saying it. Go to builds. Go to your build. This is what is my build. Because uh, everything passed and it is classic. These two are YAMLs, which I created just now. I want to work with the classic one. So there, I'll just say on that, I'll click on release. What will this do? Just see that. This will take the first step. The first step is the last step of uh, build. Build went ahead and packaged my solution and put it in a specific location. Where is that location? It is here. It put it here. It went ahead and packaged it and uh, put it here. So instead of me configuring it manually, what I'm doing, I'm coming from there. So if at all I come from builds, If at all I come from builds, like this, click on builds, and then click on release.
you see the first one is auto populated and i am i am working on the second one that is stage one the artifact is auto populated if i directly create it if i directly create it you see that there the artifact is it populated it's not populated i need to add the artifact saying uh, where is it it is in azure repo what is the project name i want to select the project name what is the repository i have to select the repository so all these steps i have to do it uh, manually instead of doing it manually what i usually do i'll just start with a build i'll say go to build click on that say release and my first step is auto populate once i create this thing next stage is where do i want to deploy it what is this first step this is the package the package is, the package which is given to me by uh, by the build uh, step so build goes ahead and builds my entire uh, project and it is given me the package once the package is given to me i need to go ahead and deploy the package somewhere where can i deploy it we spoke about services that is why i spoke about services uh, previously sir we spoke about uh, azure app service not the java service no js we do not kubernetes we spoke about kubernetes and kubernetes cluster and docker we spoke about that so few of the things which are present here is which is uh, deployed within is your yeah, internet uh, information server which is the most famous server where uh, we deploy .NET code so your is and other options i spoke about azure app service and uh, cloud service what is the difference between a cloud service and the app service you can remote log into a cloud service but you can't do it for the web app service so app service is your web app you can't do the remote logging for it so if we spoke about a few services like service fabric when i deploy thing to a service fabric i'll deploy it in multiple nodes i'll deploy it in a cluster so there is another place where i'll go ahead and uh, i can go ahead and deploy it so you have multiple places you have multiple places where you can go ahead and deploy your uh, code all of these are uh, valid options all exhaustive list all of these are valid options depending upon what you are uh, architect and what your technical need decides it's not your need we will not decide most of the time it will be the architect who decides what he wants to deploy in, uh, our application whether he wants to deploy it in a azure app uh, app service or whether he wants to deploy it in a cloud service or whether he wants to deploy it in a kubernetes uh, docker service it is up to him he will decide and once he says the name i'll just use that and uh, go ahead and create my release pipeline i'll create my release pipeline while i'm creating my release pipeline there are a few things which i need to do beforehand when i'm creating the release pipeline so there are uh, there is something called as uh, deployment group there is something called as deployment group i need to work on the deployment group and uh, create a deployment group what's a deployment group why should i create it and uh, what are the reasons uh, we have deployment groups can the deployment group be shared between multiple releases we'll speak about all that uh, tomorrow because uh, we are close to close and uh, i have multiple things which i want to speak about when we speak about releases so that is something which we will speak about after that we will speak about um, test plans of what what are test plans how can i have test plans in my azure uh, portal and what can we do um, creating new test plans and working with the testing team this is more towards testing team and uh, most of the testing teams spend their time in the test plans uh, node so there again that is what we will speak uh, about day after tomorrow 
and uh, that is where I think we are uh, good with the number of hours and we should we can be uh, happy to close our discussion. So, if you have any questions, get back to me tomorrow day after because these are the two days where uh, we will be having our final discussions and we will be covering all of what we have been done. We will just have an overview of what are the different things which we spoke about and then we can we'll be good to close our uh, DevOps discussion of uh, um, the number of parts uh, whatever is on whatever we decided on we should be completing that and we should be looking for that so any questions you have today before we close for the day anything you want to ask you can think or you can speak yeah so so as a DevOps engineer for uh, I mean Azure DevOps engineer, so uh -huh. is this enough to I mean uh, to get the uh, work on the companies or uh, how the chances will be? See, that is what I am saying. Right, you also need to have programming knowledge. I this is step number one. And uh, uh, when you speak in an interview, you can convince the interviewer that you are a DevOps engineer. But once you go on the floor. Then you will you, you, be having challenges. Um, um, so on the floor, you should know the code as well. You can't sustain just by knowing the code. So what you are, you are done with is 60% uh, of the job. Another 40% of the job has to be done. Whereas you need to know the uh, coding knowledge as well. Because uh, most of the Azure DevOps project will be on .NET. You, you need to know what is .NET and uh, what is programming to some extent. Otherwise, you can't sustain on the floor. But you can crack the interview with whatever you are doing. Uh, you can convince the interview because you know all these things. So, what is any uh, certification is required? So, how will you yeah. do that? Azure, Azure 400. You can, you can do that. AZ uh, 400. Let me just uh, show that to you. AZ uh, 400. That's a certification. For uh, DevOps, Azure DevOps Solutions, that is the certification. Um, it is uh, quite costly. Um, if at all your uh, company is ready to pay for it, you can um, go ahead and uh, try this certification. That is the certification which you need to do when you want to prove yourself as an Azure DevOps. Um, or you can, you can do any of the Azure certification. Not only that, you can do AZ100. You can do AZ100 or 103 or one, uh, uh, 101. Any of these uh, uh, courses. Uh, it is nothing like uh, you have to be on uh, DevOps. Azure, you can just prove to the guy that you have Azure knowledge. Once you have Azure knowledge, you can build on top of that and find yourself that you know uh, Azure DevOps as well. But uh, just uh, have one other question. Yeah. I'm sorry, uh, your uh, uh, microphone is very weak. Uh, I can't hear you. Yeah. So, when this question, Azure is also required. Administration, you see? Yes. Um, it's not required. It is not required. Administration is appropriate. It's not required. So, discuss it is not enough. Yeah, it is good. Whatever we have discussed, that is what is earlier to us. We don't look for any administration kind of thing. You can just uh, stick to DevOps uh, topics, and uh, that is what would be there with the DevOps. Program. So the DAZ uh, something you know, 400. So yeah. is it uh, exact the one uh, which we want to do? I mean, uh, it's required. To... See, that is why I'm saying you better do Azure. Once you prove them that you know Azure, that is AZ 100 or uh, AZ uh, uh, 200 or 300. This is on Microsoft uh, Azure infrastructure and deployment. You see the deployment there infrastructure and deployment. So you can also do this or you can do the Azure uh, 400, which is your DevOps. At least get one Azure certification. There is nothing like a specific number. 
you have to do 400 only, 100 only, nothing of that sort. Get one certification done on Azure, any certification. You feel something is easy, go for that easy one. And uh, you, you will find dumps. Do you know dumps? We will, we will find dumps uh, online. Or uh, training institutes will provide you with dumps. So that you can clear the certification with first attempt only. So, uh, we Put this in code to play. I'm sorry, what is that? So, it chooses to attend this at the moment. Um, it's not at all clear. Uh, um, I, I, I'm getting the blurry voice. Uh, can you just uh, remove the, the earphone or uh, microphone and directly speak onto the system? I think that would be better. It is it is an online exam. You can directly book. You say Azure uh, 400. You say dumps also. You say book. It's in beta. They have not it uh, declared it publicly. It's in beta now. The 400. So you can say schedule exam. It's all online. It would be like uh, you will pick a date. <coughs> you can go ahead and pick a date and uh, get the things uh, done whenever you are working on uh, this. So you can go ahead and uh, pick a date for that and uh, uh, enroll for that uh, in your uh, uh, port. So it's very straightforward when you're working with uh, scheduling the examination. You can just click on schedule and uh, you can go ahead and schedule, the, <coughs> schedule your exam, pay for it. They'll ask you for a payment. Pick a date. Once you pick a date, it will be online token. You will be given a token and a link. You can click on that link and finish for your uh, home. Sometimes they will say, go to the nearest training center. You need to go to the nearest training center and finish it. So there are two options, depending upon what is your certification. They will ask you to go to the training center, where uh, uh, there are multiple Microsoft training centers are in and around the, all the courses, in India, uh, US, or UK, everywhere. So they will ask you to go there with the token. The token will be given to that training center. Once you go there with the token at that time, they will allow you in, and you can write the exam and get the certificate. So that's about it. So we are uh, close to close. So um, we'll be closing it on Saturday, Thursday after tomorrow. Uh, just uh, come back to me with any uh, these kinds of questions. So we'll just uh, have more question oriented so that I can clear your doubts and stuff. And as well as I'll cover the remaining things. So um, get back to me with any questions you have, any doubts you have, so that uh, you are clear on what needs to be done next. I'll give you the path of what needs to be done next, so that uh, you can go take those steps and uh, get into some something good. Okay. So that's about. Is there a is there a comment? Um, okay, I can hear you. It was just now. So um. No, I can't hear you, Prashant. I can't hear you. I can't hear you now. It's not uh, audible. Now, you can type in if you want. Uh, that would be more clear to me as well. There is nothing like in notes uh, which I maintain uh, for interview purposes. Eh? There is nothing uh, which I have uh, for interviews or anything. You can see most of the time I'm speaking to you. I'm just uh, going to the portal and uh, most of the time I'm speaking to new people. I don't have a notes kind of thing. I just uh, um, um, keep speaking because uh, whatever experience I've got, I will speak from my experience. So I do not prepare any notes as such. 
If at all I can find it, I'll just uh, send it across to you and forward it across to you. I don't have, I'm, I'm not theor theoretical, I'm more practical. Yeah, okay. So, if that's about it, then uh, we're good to close. We'll meet again tomorrow at the same time. Okay, thank you.